Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, May 18th, 527 a.m. Central Time. Grain markets lower again. We've got July corn futures down five and a half at 556. July soybeans down two at 1335. July Chicago wheat down 10 and three quarters at 614 and three quarters. July Kansas City wheat down 21 and a quarter at 864 and a quarter. July spring wheat down 19 and a quarter at 840 and a half. Ugly stuff here this week, Mackenzie. Uh, let's get started with yesterday's price action, I suppose. So corn and soybean prices collapsed on Wednesday. The December 23 corn contract fell below $5 per bushel and traded at its lowest level since October 21. The November 23 soybean contract fell below $12 per bushel and traded at its lowest level since December 21 overnight. HRW wheat futures have reverted lower after posting fresh six-month highs yesterday. Demand concerns, projections for big U.S. crops, and competitive South American markets have weighed on prices. That last sentence kind of put it into uh, perspective here. Demand concerns. Uh, we've got export problems when it comes to corn. We'll talk about that here in a second. We've got ethanol production problems. We'll get to that here in a minute. We've got uh, South American crops that are very much uh, competitive or uh, priced lower than what the U.S. can offer here. Large money managers, uh, funds, of course, no surprise here, have probably been sellers of these markets. It was estimated yesterday that the fund sold 10,000 contracts of corn, 13,000 contracts of soybeans, and 13,000 contracts of HR or SRW wheat, rather. So in real time, funds are probably net short. 130,000 contracts of corn, probably still net long, maybe 10 or 15,000 contracts of soybeans, although that could be, I mean, they could be flat or net short in real time and probably net short 125,000, 130,000 contracts of SRW wheat. So, I mean, this is ugly stuff. You look at just what happened here the last two days, we're like 60 cents off of yesterday's highs in HRW wheat. I mean, this corn market the last three days has just been a bloodbath. Same thing with the soybeans. And uh, we've got some demand concerns. We've got uh, concerns regarding big supplies. We've got projections for big crops. Uh, just not anything really good to talk about. Um, we did have a chart review uh, with uh, yesterday with Brian Split. Um, we called it dumpster fire chart review. Uh, Brian is great with charts. And we went through uh, the corn charts, the soybean charts, the wheat charts, uh, talked about some possible downside targets, some possible recovery targets. Uh, we went through everything. I mean, old crop corn, new crop corn, old crop soybeans, new crop soybeans, um, the uh, uh, Chicago, or I'm sorry, Kansas City wheat, uh, tons of good stuff here. And then that video that we did with Chris Barron regarding crop insurance earlier in the week was really, really popular. Uh, if you guys want to see the premium stuff, new videos, newsletter every single business day, Go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up this morning. This is a $50 per month subscription. It'll take you one minute to sign up uh, on your phone or computer with your credit card. Uh, give it a shot this morning, guys. I'll send you over all this stuff. Um, what's up next? So uh, USDA reported another flash cancellation of U.S. corn to China on uh, on Wednesday. Uh, excuse me, on Tuesday. Was that was it? Wednesday? Yesterday Wednesday. Was yep. Wednesday. Sorry. I get me. confused too sometimes. Yes. Sorry. This, these weeks get away from me. Um, private exporters reported the cancellation of sales of 11 million bushels of U.S. corn for delivery to China during the current marketing year. China has canceled a total of 43 million bushels of U.S. corn through flash cancellation since April 24th. Okay, so here's your problem potentially is that we've still got a couple million metric tons of Chinese sales that have not been shipped. And I think that the trade is probably looking at that and saying, all right, looks like the Brazilian crop's going to be pretty good. Brazilian corn for, say, July, August deliveries trading at a fairly decent discount to U.S. corn. So if China's not in a big hurry, um, they can either hold off for a new crop or uh, maybe switch some of this stuff to Brazil. So I think there is the possibility that even more cancellations uh, could be forthcoming, and that would be hugely problematic. So, you know, USDA reduced its export projection last week. They may need to reduce it again if uh, this sort of thing continues. Uh, let's talk about some other demand problems. 
U.S. ethanol production increased moderately week over week. Weekly output of 987,000 barrels per day was up 2.3% compared to the previous week, but down 0.4% versus the same week last year. Ethanol stocks were pegged at 23.2 million barrels. The print was down 0.3% on the week and down 2.5% compared to the same week last year. U.S. implied gasoline demand declined 4.2% on the week, but increased 2.4% versus the same week last year. On I av- oh, sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I thought you were done. <laughs> On average, over the last four weeks, implied U.S. gasoline demand increased 3.3% versus the same period last year. All right. So ethanol production has not been where it needs to be. And uh, production margins are the best we've seen in a long time. You've got collapsing corn prices, yet you've got ethanol prices that have held together for the most part. So, I mean, I would hope that in the coming weeks you see some better production numbers but the way that usda has this penciled they're projecting that corn demand via ethanol is going to decline by only like one and a half percent year over year when in reality i think we're running two and a half or three percent below uh, last year's pace so ethanol production or, or corn demand via ethanol rather could be the next thing on the chopping block in terms of usda balance sheets so this old crop corn carry out in real time it's getting bigger. The export number's got to come down more. The ethanol number probably has to come down. And that, of course, carries in to your new crop balance sheet, which at face value, according to USDA, is super bearish. So uh, no positive news here either. The central U.S. Corn Belt will turn drier. Very little rainfall is expected across the region during the next seven days. This dry forecast will allow farmers to complete spring planting. However, a continuation of a dry pattern into June could result in crop issues. Some rain is expected to return late next week. This morning's GFS model projects widespread rains across the U.S. plains beginning late next week through the first few days of June. Uh, Look at this GFS map for uh, the period out through June 2nd. Look at this uh, rain event that they're talking about for the plains here. This would be a big, big shift if realized. Um, All of this stuff in the GFS, guys, uh, some of the weather guys will probably look at this and say, oh, it's overdoing it or the models are too aggressive with the rainfall. But, I mean, this could be... I mean, do you call this a drought busting event? I don't know. I'm assuming, uh, Mackenzie, you're in Nebraska. I'm assuming you will believe this when you see it. Yeah, that's exactly it. They can pre- they can predict it, but um, until it shows up, who knows? Okay, so this would be great. I mean, because the plains we know have been incredibly dry for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, this GFS, even for the central corn belt, you look at Iowa, you look at Illinois, you look at Indiana, it's pretty dry even out through um, the the first couple days of June. So could we be turning into shifting toward a drier pattern here for the central part of the Corn Belt? Uh, The Euro model suggests that out through uh, May 27th, and even the GFS kind of sticks with that idea um, out through June 2nd. It's too early to get worked up about a dry forecast for the moment. Again, it's going to allow planting to uh, be completed in a lot of these areas, but um, uh, maybe a drought buster for the planes in the cards here. I don't know. We'll see if this forecast comes to fruition. Generally, anything, any sort of forecast beyond like six or seven days out is just not super reliable, but maybe some light at the end of the tunnel for those of you guys in the planes. So the Black Sea Green deal was extended yesterday. Russia agreed to extend the deal for another two months, one day before it was set to expire. Russia has been threatening to withdraw if its demands for its own agricultural exports were not met. Uh, There are still some unresolved issues with the agreement, but talks between the parties involved will continue. After weeks of a near standstill, the flow of ships through the corridor is anticipated to pick up again. Ukraine has uh, has been able to export more than 30 million metric tons of grain and foodstuffs under the Black Sea Grain Deal. I told you Russia was bluffing. I knew it. You did. Uh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't know. I mean, as early as like, what, two days ago, it looked like this yeah. was not going to be extended at all. But um, in any case, this is partially, I would say partially responsible for the uh, reversal or rejection of new highs in the wheat market yesterday. I think that that action in the wheat market has more to do with collapsing row crop prices and just the fact that we have like a non-existent demand base for wheat out of the U.S. We're so overpriced compared to everybody else. But um, yeah, I guess we're going to go for another 60 days and then we'll be having this exact same conversation, you know, Mm -hmm. regarding what Russia is going to do, you know, a month or so from now, uh, the way that it looks. 
The Kansas wheat tour continues to project historically low wheat wheat yields. During the second day of the tour, crop scouts projected an average yield for HRW wheat in the southwestern portion of Kansas at 27.5 bushels per acre. This is the worst projection since at least 2003 and is down from 37 bushels per acre last year. The Wheat Quality Council's five-year average for the same area from 2017 to 2022 was 44.68 bushels per acre. Participants noted there was more freeze damage than anticipated. The worst crops were short and thin with bare spots out in the fields. I feel like that 27 and a half even sounds high. I don't, um, I didn't read too much into this tour. I can't look at every single thing every single day, but um, I don't know how they account for abandonment or acres that won't be harvested or wheat that never came up. I don't know. No secret here, guys. The Kansas wheat crop's not good. Um, Did we peak on bullish crop news yesterday? Uh, That's certainly um, a possibility. We do have an export sales report this morning. It's not going to be good. We may see net cancellations of old crop corn, uh, maybe net positive to to the tune of 300,000 or so. Soybean sales could be zero up to 300. Wheat sales, 50,000 to 150. So uh, not anything good expected out of the export sales report this morning. Uh, Cattle market yesterday? Uh, Close mostly lower for the most part. Feeder cattle futures were down an average of 88 cents, anywhere from 32 cents to a buck 15. Live cattle futures were mixed on Wednesday with the front three contracts gaining an average of 58 cents, but then the back contracts lost an average of 27 cents. Cash cattle trade so far this week has been at a standstill. Box beef had another down day on Wednesday. Choice end of the day at 298.15. That was down 132. Select end of the day at 282.89. That was down a buck 46. Outside markets this morning, guys, US dollars a little bit higher. Stock market's higher. SP's up nine. The Dow Jones up 30. Bonds off a little bit. Gold's down four bucks. Crude oil is down 22 cents in the June WTI at 72.59. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you Friday.